Good morning. This is the Saturday morning interview. My name is Geoffrey Onditi. Today in the studio, I have Peter Kuguru, an industrialist. Bona Peter Kuguru, welcome. Uh, you, good morning, you, listener. Before we continue further, Bona Peter Kuguru, where have you been long time since we talked last on the Saturday morning interview? Over a year ago, actually. Thank you. I've been expanding my industrial base and uh, trying to plan uh, for growth. Because the uh, future is catching up on us and uh, we have to think where we shall be stationed within a global economy. So now, as I, I talked to you maybe a year ago, we established um, an outlet business for sanitary pads, which we call All White Sanitary Pads, mm. which we have introduced and they are doing very well. We are also selling them in schools. We are selling them to uh, through the rehabilitation of the girl child, a program which is carried out by, the, by many of the women reps within the counties. So that's what we are doing for all white sanitary pads. We are also expanding our milling business, and we are looking now how to increase our soda our distribution business because that had gone down. The softer, the softer distribution business had not uh, been relaunched. And we are going to. We are looking into how to launch that one because the people are asking for it. People are demanding for softer solar. Bona Kuguru, you mentioned something interesting that the future is catching up with you. What did you mean exactly? What I mean is that the current business in a global market is based on a digital, digital base. And unless you are increasing your digital investment, you find that you cannot do business fast enough to keep up with the rest of the world. So we are now we are now investing more and more in all the department with in with computerization, whether it is transport, whether it is office, whether it's accounts, whether it's communication and logistics. We are increasing our computerization. In short, you you, you mean that you're moving from analog to digital now? Yeah, that is what we call modernization of of business today, so that uh, we are able to to manage our businesses. I can now manage my my businesses from my office. I can see what's happening in the milling. I can see my transport, my trucks, whether in Mombasa or whether in Kisumu or whether in Uganda or Tanzania. I can trace them and, and communicate with my drivers. I can also deal with business uh, distributors uh, and, and the level of uh, stocking from, from the office. So we are uh, increasing our computerization more and more in the business. So in short for the listener out there, how does digitization help in, in the improvement of business activities here in Kenya in general? Uh, we call it uh, in the business integration. So if you're able to integrate your business uh, departments, so that the accounting, transport, uh, administration, manufacturing, all departments are integrated, connected by computer departments. You, every department knows what another department is doing. So you're able to do business more efficiently, you increase efficiency, you reduce the costs, and you increase the time. Or in other words, you reduce the time of doing business. You can carry out uh, an activity faster and uh, do what's called uh, just in time. So that if my distributor in Kirugoya or in uh, Webuye runs out of product, um, they call me or they send me an SMS and I'm able to sup supply them faster. If a woman rep for, say, Busia runs out of pads and let me know through SMS, I'm able to activate a uh, transport distribution to them faster through an integrated system. So computerization is integration of all departments yes. and doing business faster so that we're able to reach anyone just in time. Yes. Let's come um, to the general talk now. For example, we are talking about the economy of this country. We, are, we mean Kenya. Mm. You are an industrialist. What is your honest opinion in terms of the state of the economy right now in Kenya? The state of the economy today in Kenya is uh, not uh, doing as well as it should have done, mainly because uh, the realization of the of the realization of productivity from the economic uh, infrastructures and investments has not reached the common man. So the economy is based on uh, the measure of the growth of the middle class. If the people are moving from the uh, mass or low, econ or, or low class to middle class, that means they are growing, the economy is growing. But if the, if the 
unemployment is uh, not getting less. If unemployment is increasing, that means that people are coming from universities, from high schools, from primary schools, and they can't get jobs. That means uh, the growth of poverty is not getting less. That means our economy is not doing better. I think that uh, with the government investment into infrastructure, the standard rail, investment into hospitals, in schools, into roads, into infrastructure, if that can be increased, it can improve our economy. Yes, you're talking about increasing. And right now, we know that there are so many projects. You've mentioned some of them. Don't you think they're enough? As of now? I think the biggest uh, and the best project that would have uh, benefited this country is the youth, youth project, which was started. But because that stalled, it did not benefit the youth. Because the youth are the, the, ge- youth are the generators mm. in an economy. If you, can, if you can benefit the youth and help them to generate wealth, the, the economy grows. But now, right now, the problem uh, is that uh, government injects money in the economy, and because of corruption, the money is sucked out of the economy. So the economy does not grow. I think that if, if the youth docket had uh, realized the intended benefit, it would, it would have been improved our economy. But now, because the money was going directly into the pocket of the youth, and you see the youth in reinvest that money in small businesses, in SMEs, and then they also benefit. You see, they benefit small shops and a kiosk, and the shops are able to grow. Business, the business is able to grow business. Uh, if business does not grow business, the economy cannot grow. So the future is bright in this country because the transformation of infrastructure, of that it means the road being built today, the rail being built today, the other infrastructure built today, like a, a growth of a computerization, growth of a, a, a transportation, growth of a, all sectors, the hospitals, hospitals, education. With these things growing slowly, slowly, the future is bright. But then the government needs to reduce uh, the activities that uh, bring us backward, like, like, like corruption. Yes, because, for example... Yes. The, the, the president, when he was in France, he got a loan of six billion to develop our economy. Six billion shillings. At the same time, Chase Bank went down because uh, of corruption, which involved sucking out of 16.6 billion. So you can see the corruption is reducing faster than the, the, the increase in the injection of the economy. We're borrowing and uh, theft is higher than the borrowing. So we are removing the money from the economy faster than we are injecting. That means we are killing the economy. Let me take you back. You mentioned something to do with projects, and we really know there are projects that are being done. But Mm -hmm. other leaders, for example, politicians, especially from the opposition, have mentioned that the government is doing so many projects, and these many projects are affecting the economy in one way or another. What do you think of that opinion by especially opposition leaders? I think projects are good. I think projects, the government should do, sorry, government should do more and more projects to, to uh, try and restart the economy and also to try and, uh, and uh, bring more uh, stimulus into the economy so that they can grow the middle class. Because um, growth of the economy is measured, measured by the growth of the middle class. That means the middle class is growing from the low class. Mm. The low class, those people in the low class who are earning a dollar a day, those people are going to pull us down. But when the middle class is growing through growth of projects, uh, the middle, the, the lower class is shrinking. That economy is growing, and uh, they are bringing more SMEs. That means uh, micro, micro uh, projects are growing, micro enterprises are growing. That is how to grow the economy. But when uh, projects are being killed by sucking out the money intended for those projects by corruption, uh, we are marking time in one spot. We are not growing, and we need to grow the economy by injecting money into projects. Mm. Yeah, government project, public project. We need to grow roads because roads employ people. We need to grow the railway because railways grow people. We need to grow education because education uh, injects educated people back in the economy to grow the economy. This is the Saturday morning interview and today I'm speaking with Peter Kuguru, an industrialist and we are focusing on the state of the economy in Kenya today. 
Before we continue, Father, mm -hmm. you were mentioning something to do with corruption. Mm -hmm. I want us to focus on corruption and how it has affected the economy. You've mentioned something that it has affected the economy because people are taking away the money meant for development or to develop some projects. Now, why are we not fighting corruption as a nation in good ways? Corruption it's the fabric of economy. So the economy cannot grow. In fact, the economy degenerates as the corruption grows. So we need to stop it. Uh, and, and the organs which are there to control economy, uh, they are run by human beings. And those human beings, when they get a chance themselves to get involved in corrupt deals, they cannot help control the economy. So we are in, in danger that our economy is being uh, eaten by corruption because the organs, public organs, like EACC. The Index the, and Anti-Corruption Yeah, yes. like the CID, the, 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 the Directorate of uh, Criminal Investigation, the DPP, the Optiban, all of them. They are run by corrupt individuals because the corruption is uh, being seen as a, as a vice to enrich People are, people are admiring it, so nobody is now fighting it. You're saying that people are admiring corruption? I am saying that uh, people are competing to be more corrupt. Everybody is trying to be more corrupt than everybody else. But so you know how... So they're admiring corruption? Yeah, people are, people are getting involved because they are seeing... For example, you see, you see your friend in government buy a helicopter. You also want to buy one. And you see but the fact that you're not getting caught. Uh, other people are saying, oh, so-and-so is doing better. And you see, these are fruits of corruption. You see, us in the industry, yes. we are being affected more and more by the failure of performance of economy because we are manufacturers of mass market goods. And that's why I came to you, because you are, in one way or another, being affected by such issues. Yes, yeah. continue. You see, for me, for, as, an, as a manufacturer of mass market goods, what you call consumer goods, fast-moving consumer goods, we find that uh, in a mass market, the consumers have no money. And when the consumers have no money, the industry cannot grow. And if an industry cannot grow, employment cannot be expanded. So uh, economy cannot be grown by industrialization. So we need to industrialize by putting more money into mass market. So the mass market can uh, stimulate the industry by buying industrial goods. Right now, people are only buying essential goods, which is not good enough. You find that people are buying unga because is, yes. it's an essential commodity and they cannot do without it. But they have no money left now to buy luxury goods. So People are people producing uh, luxury goods like uh, fridges, like cookers, like uh, uh, perfumes. They cannot grow their own industries. And you see those industries are what generates employment. And if you cannot generate employment, you cannot, you cannot uh, expand the same economy we want to, to expand. So we need more money in the common man's pocket so that he can, he, he can now stimulate industry. All industries, not only essential industries. All, all, we need people buying more, more new vehicles. We don't want people buying second-hand vehicles because second-hand vehicles do not generate a growth of economy because they are demanding more spares and we are sending more money out of uh, a country uh, to buy spares mm. and that means it's not helping the country. Yes, uh, maybe I'll ask <coughs> you I'll ask you this question, Bana Peter Kuguru. When you're talking about industrialists like you are uh, being affected, have you witnessed that, for example, yourself? Yeah, I'm witnessing it as, uh, as an individual. I'm finding that uh, the cost of doing business is becoming more expensive because of uh, corruption. Because today, if I want to get a license, uh, I have to go to many offices. I know the government is working very, very hard uh, to reduce the economy, to, to, to reduce the cost of business. But I'll give you an example. This week, I was tra transporting a commodity on Sunday from Nyeri to Nairobi. My truck was arrested in uh, Luiru. And was, we were told, the driver was told to go to Kenha to get a permit. We already had a permit, Kenya National Roads, yes. Kenha. Well, we were told to go to Kenha, Kenha to, to buy a license. And you see that person was saying, if you give us a thousand bob, we shall let you pass. But if you go to Kenha, it will cost you twenty thousand bob. So we opted. I said, okay, let me let me suffer. Let me go to Kenha. And I went to Kenha and I bought a license for twenty thousand bob. I already had a license from Nyeri for three thousand bob, which which a fellow said I'm not going to, to take that. Way. In fact, he confiscated it. So who do I go to now to mitigate that problem? My business suffered three days of vehicle on the road. It cost me twenty thousand bob. You see, these police guys in the road or the what do you call these Kenha guys or Kura 
guys on the highway. They are killing the economy because they are being told by their bosses to collect money. So, See, so their work ascension. is to collect money which go, finds its way up to their bosses. So the bosses, you have nowhere to go now. You have nowhere to go and address your problem. You either pay these people or bribe them. You either lose your money paying a higher license or bribe, bribe the cops or those people on the highway. Highway people who have been put there now removing the police, making the problem worse. Yes. As key stakeholders in this economy, mm. in this country, what are you doing probably to inform the government that they need to wake up in mm. terms of enhancing the economy, in terms of fighting corruption, for example, that has affected this country? What are you doing exactly as stakeholders? We, we can compu- You can complain through KEPSA, which is our private estates body, or through CAM, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, who are our association of manufacturers. We can complain through these uh, bodies, but even them, they know these problems. And even them, they are advising the government. We are advising the ministers, they are advising the president, they are advising the uh, deputy president. And uh, I do think that uh, these bodies, these government officials are trying to do something, but maybe the disease is too much spread into the into the veins of uh, all conduit in the government. They are, they the conduits are too too big and they're getting bigger and bigger. So they are siphoning more and more money. And like I said, the competition now is not to reduce corruption. The competition is how to increase it so that people, more and more people can benefit from it. I remember you said that now people are admiring corruption because of the benefits. Because the costs of being caught are not there. Because you, find, you can find that uh, if you can bribe a judge and get away with it, why do you not uh, want to get involved with it? So you find that uh, if a governor can still come money and bribe a judge and get away with it. Uh, so which governor now does not want to get corrupt? Which governor does not want to loot the coffers of the county when they know that uh, next year during the campaigns for elections, they will be required to give money to the electorate and the one who gives more, it gets elected. So they want to steal more and more to give more and more. I don't know. And, and, I and, think it's a cycle. It's a, it's corruption a cycle. becomes a cycle. It's a cycle that cannot be defeated in this country. I think the president yes. needs to lead by taking very stringent measures. Because if the government pays lip service to the vice and the people are getting away and the government is fearing to take step because the people are taking steps on are their guys. You know, they say they is our man. Then they're never going to be eradic- eradicated. Yes, um, Mr. Kuguru, I want to take you back to last year. You were very optimistic about the Global Entrepreneurship Summit that was held in Nairobi and President uh, Barack Obama of the United States of America attended that um, summit in Nairobi. Um, have you seen benefits since then? Because you were very optimistic, I remember. I was very optimistic. I joined that Global Entrepreneurship Program. In fact, I started started my new business of uh, sanitary pads, all white sanitary pads, uh, as a group of inter- entrepreneurship project because uh, I got the technology which is, came from America and then I went to China and uh, request or, or, or franchise that technology to a uh, manufacturer to manufacture it for me so I do an incubation business here. When the incubation business grows, then I can produce here. But you can see that now, when I did all that, I spent money, I bought the technology, I uh, franchised in China at a cost. I, I importing here at a cost. You find when I bring it here, the mass market is not able to support the industry. So I don't benefit from that GES, Group Entrepreneurship Scheme, because the mass market here is not uh, motivated. They're not uh, empowered. So you find that uh, in this country, it will take us some time. We shall benefit. We shall benefit from Group Entrepreneurship because we're in a group and we are working in a group enterprise. We are working inside. The, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we cannot run away from the group of village. We are, we are we are part and parcel of it, but unless we, we, we modulate our economy so that we can motivate the mass market, so that the, so that the uh, mass, mass class can grow into the middle class, get more money so that it can stimulate the industry so that the industry can grow and mass, the middle income can grow then we can uh, get a benefit of global entrepreneurship. Yes, fi- finally, as we are winding up the Saturday morning interview, you are saying that the lower class should be empowered finally in order to, for example, buy the non-essential goods that you mentioned Ali. How should we empower these uh, lower class people? We can empower the lower class people by generating more projects mm. so 
that you can create employment. And once we employ, we, we employ more people, money goes into the pocket of the, of the mass class, of the bottom class. When it goes to the bottom class, it, they grow into middle class. And the economy is measured by the growth of the middle class. So we need to grow the middle class because those middle class people are the ones which start micro-enterprises. And micro-enterprises employ more people. So they, again, the cycle generates into a bigger middle class cycle. And when that grows, the economy grows. Unless that's happening, we are going to be marking time on one spot of poverty. We are not going to eradicate our poverty. And we know it. So we, because we know it, we need more people getting involved into eradicating poverty by growing middle class, by eliminating uh, the lower class, by employing more people, by increasing the project, by reducing corruption. You know the corruption is a dose, is a dawa. If you reduce the corruption, you start growing projects. You know, everything is biting into to uh, failure in this economy uh, because of uh, corruption. If we reduce the corruption, if we eliminate corruption, everything will grow automatically. So the main issue here is corruption. The big thing here is corruption. We need to eliminate corruption. With corruption growing, poverty is growing actually. People are not getting richer. A few people at the top are getting very rich, but they are taking their money out of the country. So there are no money circulating in the economy. So that if the product of my, economy, my, my industry, my product, the product of my industry, have nobody to buy them. I cannot sell to anybody. Who am I going to sell to? Because the mass market don't have money. I'm going to take my, my product in the shops and they'll sit in the shops and the shop eventually will close down and say, Peter, take your product back. Mr. Kuguru, come and get your product from Dakuban because nobody's buying them. And that means that in my industry will collapse. Look at the collapsing banks. These banks are collapsing because of corruption. And when the banks collapses, it affects a lot of, it makes a lot of people poorer. And with the poverty growing because of uh, corruption, we are killing our economy. Mind you, we are the drivers of African economy in Kenya. Kenya is, a, is, is one of the fastest growing economic market, which, which again, I'm contradicting myself. We are the fastest growing economic uh, market in Africa. But even with all that gain, it can all be killed by, econ- by, by corruption. It can all be it. killed by corruption. It can, no, it can no, we, we, we can move backwards. But look at Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the biggest economy, and yet it's not moving fast enough because of corruption. And now we are probably going to be more corrupt than Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much <laughs> for your time and participating on the Saturday morning interview. Thank you so much and um, I give my greetings to all the listeners in Kenya and out of Kenya. Thank you very much Bwana Peter Kuguru for your time and participating on the Saturday morning interview.